It's interesting working on these first-person games that are a blend of first-person shooter, stealth game, and story game, uh, or even RPG at times, because, you know, they don't come out that often, and the people who love them really, really love them. And there are even, like, games at the edge of this kind of thing. You know, you could play Stalker or play Far Cry 2, uh, play Bioshock for sure. You know, but having participated in, uh, I was lead tester for 10 months of System Shock 1, and those guys were already making this kind of game for, for several years. They had made Underworld, Underworld 2. So I learned a tremendous amount from them. But then working on uh, the first Deus Ex game and the second Deus Ex game, it's always a pleasure to like when it does come together because these games, the sum of, of all the parts is much greater. Somehow they, it just works together. You know, when you're, you're moving through the world at first person and you're going at your own pace, it's not a go, go, go game. You can stop and observe. There are multiple ways to go. There are multiple solutions. We really love this kind of thing and Arcane has been around for 17 years. We pretty much, with Rafael Colantonio um, guiding the studio the entire time, we, we pretty much built a team that is mostly really, really die hard into that, that kind of experience. Since Dishonored 1 came out, Thief has been released, Bioshock Infinite came out in that gap. Uh, and now there's news of System Shock 3 in development. Do you see the genre that you love specifically gaining traction again and kind of gaining momentum? You know what's funny is I think that the same way a long time ago nerd culture was this like little niche thing and then it just got absorbed into everything. The Lord of the Rings movies or the Avengers films, you, you might love them, you might find them boring, whatever, but they're like huge mainstream things, right? They're, they're part of mainstream culture. And at a certain point, if you knew who Jarvis was, you were a nerd. You, you, were, you had esoteric tastes. And in that same way, I feel like a lot of what was developed by hybrid shooter RPGs, first person games, has just been absorbed by other games. And so I think those pieces are filtered out all through uh, other subgenres, basically. It's interesting to me specifically, just honing in on one detail in Dishonored 2, uh, adding voices to the main characters. Do you think that just the industry has changed so much since Dishonored 1 that it would be more jarring to not have voiced characters? Yeah, I think you could go either way in a first person game with a voice or without a voice. There's always been an argument to be made there. We did find with Dishonored 1 that people wanted to know more about Corvo's emotional reaction to what was happening around him. Uh, and so if used correctly, I think it's a strength. It's just another tool. You, can, you could get away without it for sure. But uh, in our case, uh, for Emily and Corvo, I have to say, it's comforting. You know, we do, we do this thing in Dishonored 2 where we have objects scattered out through the world that if you approach them, we try to put them in a place where there's not a lot of action. If you approach them, you can click on them to, for the character to comment. Uh, like a pickaxe from the mines is laying on the floor of a ruined building. And they have different lines based on whether they're Corvo or Emily, and they have different lines based on like three different levels of chaos based on how you've played. And so their mood, you know, their temperament, who they are, uh, is expressed through these objects across the world, in addition to other one-liners and things like that. So the voice is a tool that you can use in lots of different ways. You know, we had things before, like you find a note, or you see an event in the distance, or you see a building, and you can update your goals by saying, dun dun, you found the, the house of so-and-so. But now you can do that, and you can have Emily say, who would build a place like this? You know, and it's just like a little color commentary. It's her reaction, and maybe it's a little different than your reaction, that's, that's the risk. But at the same time, you get a sense of who she is and how she's reacting. And if you're the player that's really struggling to understand what's going on, because let's be honest, our game is like drinking from a fire hose sometimes, it helps sometimes, like, oh, there's a building there that I'm supposed to notice. You know, oh, someone built it and it's weird and that's where my target lives. You know, like, uh, sometimes those things are just helpers uh, in addition to everything else. I mean, you talk about having options in the menu. Would you ever consider having an option to turn that off for the people that are really turned off by voice characters? Initially, we considered having uh, the option to turn it off, but we ended up using it for so many little gameplay cues that I think we dropped that idea. So yeah, the voice is there. How much, when you're designing this on R2, can you force players to concentrate and pay attention? How much do you worry about players' attention spans? Yeah, Dishonored 2, Dishonored in general, is interesting in that respect. Uh, one of Raph's, uh, watching Raph playtest, Rafael Colantonio is our studio founder and co-creative director. Watching him playtest is such an interesting experience because there are times that he's like the deepest, most introspective player, and then there are times when he's the most impatient, I get me to the point kind of player. 
And when he gets uh, in that sort of guy whose family is from Italy way, when he gets frustrated and he starts cursing at the game and playing it, uh, it's really interesting. And so once in a while he says something during those moments that's worth writing down. And one time he said, uh, don't make me solve a math problem in the middle of a, a firefight. And uh, it, it's absolutely true, there was a puzzle or something, and he was trying to figure out the puzzle, and guards were attacking him at the same time. And it just like turns your brain off to have to deal with action, to have to deal with a ball coming at you, or a sword, or whatever. We've learned a lot about how to not overwhelm the player. Quiet moments are often places with environmental storytelling or with puzzles to solve, and uh, action moments have often been simplified in other ways so that your brain can focus more on what's going on with the action. Is it just paranoia to think like, oh, gamers these days, oh, they're too busy playing Clash Royale, they can't focus and concentrate on an immersive game like Dishonored 2? I've never been afraid of that. I think that we still haven't maxed out the audience for, for games. I was on a train in France not long ago, the Metro, and I looked around and there were four people playing some variation of Bejeweled. Like an old woman, a little kid, like you know, uh, a dude who looked like he, he was visiting from another country, you know, like, it was, it was amazing. So I, I don't think we've maxed out the number of people who play games. And it, I hope more people gravitate toward games like ours, where you do have to think, you have to absorb the narrative, you have to understand the mechanics. But that said, Dishonored is a game where if you want to approach it like an action game, where you run from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, and it's a courtly intrigue where you have uh, corrupt assassination targets and you take them down and at the end of the day you take back the throne, you can play it like that. On the other hand, if you want to creep through the game and think uh, about combining the mechanics in interesting ways and observing the world and absorbing all the lore of the Empire of the Isles, you could do that as well. If you want to play the game five times, you can play as Koro, as Emily, you can play violently or stealthily. It really does lend itself to various levels of depth, I guess I'm saying. The same way some movies do, you know, you can go and watch the car chases and things like that, or you can get into the subtext of what's going on with the characters and the history of cinema, who's done a movie like this in the past, and how does this movie play off of that movie. I think there are, there are different ways you can approach it. So just in general then, what do you think Dishonored 2's release, what impact do you think, do you hope that it has in the industry? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think more than anything, uh, I mean, there are many ways I can answer this question. For my teammates, I hope the game does well because it, I know from personal experience, having it happen a couple of times now, when your game does really well, like a Deus Ex or a Dishonored, it, it changes your life in a way because for the rest of your life, you can look back and know, you know, hey, we did this thing really well and people liked it. That, that's very powerful emotionally and personally. So, so I, can re I can react to the question that way. But in terms of the industry, I think the strongest feeling I have is the we have lots of people who like the game. They, they played it like uh, the AAA action game they played that year, or the stealth game because they're the stealth community or whatever. But then we have this subset of fans that are just diehard vocal fans of the world. They did art, they did cosplay, they did fiction. Some of them made music. Uh, they're big fans of, of Dishonored, the Dishonored world. And I hope those people are really happy with what we've done. In, in terms of changing the industry, I, I hope like Dark Souls, like Dishonored, like a lot of indie games, I hope it shows people that you don't have to dumb down, down your game, you know. Uh, and further, I hope people that were afraid of putting a female protagonist in the lead for the sake of like giving lots of different people in our society a representational avatar who they could kind of see as themselves, I hope it broadens the range like that. I mean, I have a, I have a lot of hopes for this game.